MJ with a post up. Backs his way in. Richmond knocks it away. Brings it down, passes off, and the player lays it in. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kepper. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean David. Hello, good day, everyone. Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to take a look at the rivalry between Mitch Richmond and Michael Jordan and why Richmond was one of the few guys that Michael Jordan did not enjoy playing against. But before we dive into that, let me ask you guys for a small favor. If you're new to the show, please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content. All right, enough said. Let's get right into it. So where do we start? I would say let me take you back to the early years of Mitch Richmond's NBA career. When Mitch Richmond entered the NBA in 1988, he was no ordinary rookie. Performing on a high level right from the start, it did not take Mitch long to become one of the best shooting guards in the NBA. The combination of power, a nice touch from anywhere on the court, as well as a supreme post game made Richmond an almost unstoppable weapon. He was averaging 22 points, 6 rebounds and 4 assists in his rookie season and won the Rookie of the Year trophy. In his second season, his team was joined by Tim Hardaway, who turned out to be the perfect running mate for Richmond and Chris Mullen. Now forming the legendary Run TMC, Richmond would play for one of the most exciting teams in the NBA. And while Richmond was getting better and better, he would prove that he would not shy away from any competition. Even after Mitch got traded to the Sacramento Kings, where he not would have Chris Mullen and Tim Hardaway by his side, Richmond would take on the best shooting guards in the entire league. Guys like Clyde Drexler, Reggie Miller, and of course, Michael Jordan. And talking about Michael Jordan, this is exactly what we're going to take a look at in this video. When most players would lose the game against Jordan even before the game has started, Mitch would not only show up, but give Jordan a real battle. Not only would Mitch always keep Jordan pretty busy on defense, but he also would guard Jordan every single time both players were on the court. If we take a look at some of their matchups, you will see that Richmond not only held his own against Jordan, but sometimes even played better than MJ. And yes, of course, Jordan teams would often win, but we have to remember that when Richmond was playing for the Sacramento Kings, he not exactly had the right help. Playing him tough, giving him 23 while he gives you no, 33. No, I'm talking about they would give him 30 and he didn't have the same numbers. Come on. Really? Now. Yes. There's people out there. And they were players that he did not want to see. What? Yes. I mean, there's a lot of guys that were afraid of Mike, but there were some a few that he was afraid of too now. Th who? Come on now. They, he did not want to see Mitch Richmond. I'm telling you that right now. Come on, man. Man, Mitch Richmond. With all due respect that to big Mitch. old head. He put that on Mike, swing it around. Mike was like, nah, I don't want to mess with that. So why did Jordan fear Mitch Richmond? Well, fear is a very big word, especially in basketball. But there's no denying that Richmond was a player that Jordan really respected. And one of the reasons was that Richmond was one of the few guys that Jordan could not push around. Mitch was probably the only shooting guard who was stronger than MJ. This you could easily see when MJ was trying to post up on Richmond. He really had to work hard just to get a shot off. Another thing that I figured out is that Richmond was one of the few guys who could not only guard Jordan, but also score on Jordan. He had the energy and the willpower. Now let's take a look at some highlights of their rivalry. The top prize at each year's trading deadline is Mitch Richmond. And yet once again, Mitch is still a king. Sacramento can't seem to find the right package for the league's number three score and an annual all-star. Another great game within a game. Mitch versus Michael. Bulls and Kings next. Shot and uh, got put right back in his face. Jordan backing Richmond. 
It's not often you see the two stars oppose each other on both ends. And that's the treat of tonight's ball game. Mitch Richmond and Michael Jordan. A lot of time we talk about matchups and they never really occur. They just happen to be on the floor at the same time. But you're right, these two guys defend each other. Look at, here's Richmond with a long three. Nails it down. Richmond cleared off the screen. Kukoc unable to help in time. Jordan on the block. Posting Richmond. starting lineup, but he makes sure that Dennis gets a nice, easy hoop. Richmond for three. Ring it up. Call. Richmond, open court over Jordan. Mitch Richmond off to a good start. Eight points, two trades. So now that we looked at the rivalry between Michael Jordan and Mitch Richmond, I think it would make sense to talk to the man himself. Mitch, how you doing? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Can't complain, man. Can't complain. Now, Mitch, in this episode, we were talking about your rivalry with Michael Jordan. And the first question that I have is, do you actually remember the first NBA game you had against MJ? Uh, yeah, I think uh, the first game I, I had against him uh, was at Golden State, uh, the first time I played against him. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, it was, it was a thrill. You know, you had to be prepared. Uh, just like any other guy that I, I prepared for in any game, but uh, Michael was definitely different uh, to pre prepare for. Do you also remember how the game ended? I'm pretty sure I think they beat us. Uh, no, they didn't. We, they, did we won that game? <laughs> yeah, you won by okay. 10 and you had 27 on Jordan. Okay, that was the, uh, yeah, that was, the, that was when I was with the Warriors. But yes. I had, a, I had a lot of losses with, uh, with Sacramento, <laughs> so... That's probably why. What? That's probably why that was. Yeah. yeah, that was still in the Run TMC era. So um, I had a question. I, I'm a basketball coach myself, and I was wondering: Was it tougher for you to guard Jordan when you were still playing uh, with the Warriors because you guys were playing such an up-tempo basketball, which was, mm -hmm. which was such so energetic, but obviously also causing a lot of. Um, yeah, energy. Uh, was it tougher for you to play Jordan in that era, or was it tougher playing for the Kings when you didn't have the right supporting cast? I think it was both. Um, you know, he was such a unique player that you had to really kind of gear up for, do your homework on. You know, Michael had every move in the book, and um, and I, I I was a guy that I really liked watching film. And so every guy I went up against, I always watched the last game that they played uh, before we played them. Uh, I know we do that in film session, but I would take that at home and really kind of study it. And uh, I would just kind of study what Michael likes to do and what shoulder he likes to go off and what he does uh, a lot more than others. I mean, he can, I mean, a lot more moves than others, but, but he, everyone has a go-to move. And, uh, and so I just really tried to kind of focus on that uh, when he had me on the post or when he tried to drive. And, and so, and, and it helped me in, in a ways, but he, he was still a unique player that, you know, 98% of the time he still got the ball. Yeah, very true. But I, I think you're being very humble just now because um, I know for a fact, I mean, I prepared for the interview and being a basketball historian, I, kn I know this kind of stuff. Um, okay. When you caught the ball on the block, yeah. Michael really, really, really had to use all of his energy, all of his power to mm -hmm. to contain you. And, right. and and Jordan did not have to do that with many guys. So so I, I think you are one of the few guys who made Jordan work on both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no question. I, I think, uh, you know, I, I think I've, I've learned that from a young age. I think the energy and the effort, uh, I think if you put the energy and the effort and the time into it, uh, you know, even if you're going against the best players, if you if you try your hardest and 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 play with that type of tenacity and and, and girth, I mean, I mean not girth, but I mean uh, toughness, uh, uh, pause, pause. <laughs> <laughs> but play, play with that side, that type of toughness. I think you know things will work out in your favor. So I've learned that at a young age, uh, playing football, uh, that you had to come with that type of energy and. And with, with Michael, um, man, you had to use everything. I mean, you had to make him work on the offensive end and he because he's definitely going to make you work 
on the defensive end. So I always tried to match that. And that it was and just like I said, it wasn't just Michael. It was every guy that I went with went against, but Michael was definitely a unique talent. When did you start to realize that Jordan really respected you? Because uh, especially when for the younger folks that are watching the show, um, Jordan was not a guy who was openly talking good about other players. Like he was so competitive, he would never mention another guy being great. But with right. you, I saw two different interviews where he was praising you. Right. So when did you realize, okay, this guy actually likes my style? Well, I, 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 I know Michael, uh, even though when I was in um, uh, when I, my first couple years in, in the NBA, Uh, one of his best friends was Rod Higgins. Rod Higgins actually played on our team. Um, and so, um, you know, in the summertime, sometimes we, we were we were probably just shooting around and, and do a little stuff in Fresno when, when Rod had his camps. Uh, we would hang out a little bit. Uh, but but more so, I think, uh, I think he understood that I was going to, you know, definitely play him hard and not back down. And I think he felt that in every possession, even if he scored on me. I was going to be right back in his face, um, really trying to make him work um, because, I mean, because he had everything. And so, and I knew that he was going to do that for me. I knew he was going to do that on the other end. And I knew that um, um, I felt confident in my scoring against him just as well as he felt against against me. But um, I, I wasn't going to be afraid. I wasn't going to be scared. Um, you know, I, I was going to play my game because I, I put in the time and the hours of practicing all of those things, and it didn't matter if it was uh, it was it was Michael or someone else. Um, I put in the time and the effort in the gym uh, to make those tough shots, and that's why I came up making tough shots. So, uh, you know, that was my forte. Yeah. Now, the last question before we talk about what you're doing uh, currently. Um, now, Jordan was a guy who was known to trash talk his opponents, but I mm -hmm. always had the feeling that he was, he wouldn't do it to everybody. Yeah. He would choose the guys carefully who he mm -hmm. would do it to. I'm yeah. just curious, did he ever try to trash talk you? Because, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. you always seemed to me like a guy who uh, who would never... Yeah, never bite on 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 the what what you call it? Uh, yeah, the trap. Would, right, right, right. Um, yeah, we, we actually we never trash talk to one another. Uh, you know, I've I've always felt like I mean I'm I'm then you look back at my career, I always had a stone face. Yes, uh, I didn't really re, uh, interact with too many guys. Um, only on my only my teammates, and so me and Mike would shake hands and and we wouldn't talk. And, After that, I mean, we just went at each other very hard, uh, playing very physical. Uh, I can, rem you know, remember the times when I first started uh, playing against Michael, and Michael uh, was was so quick off the off the dribble. Uh, and what one, one thing that that helped me that I tried to 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 get as close as I possibly can to him, so I can put my body on him yeah. and kind of wear him down a little bit. And, and then I think in in the uh, latter part of his. Uh, Uh, of his career, he started lifting weights. Yes. And then he started, you know, being on the block as much as possible. And then, you know, he had the strength to kind of hold guys off. And so we had really tremendous battles in the post, um, just going at each other, just just playing really physical basketball and and, and really kind of competing. And I and I think he enjoyed it and, and I really enjoyed it too. I knew when I had to go to, to to Chicago, I had to get my rest and be prepared and be ready to play him. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Now, obviously, since your playing days are over, you kept yourself pretty busy with countless projects. Uh, right. What are you? What have you been up to recently? Well, recently, man, I've, I've uh, I, I launched my uh, digital asset company called PlanetRock.net, and uh, I partnered with about five companies, and 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 on the way of partnering with more uh, in the digital um, in the digital space. And uh, one of our, our projects that we're going to be starting um, off with is the Run TMC. You know, we're going back in time and we're bringing that to the forefront and uh, we're bringing that the new school Run TMC. So that's one of my projects that we're doing and we're doing that in probably like um, uh, we're doing that with three or four different companies in different um, different areas. Uh, so we're de dealing with NFTs, memorabilia, uh, um, um, digital twinning. 
uh, a lot of other stuff, augment reality. Uh, so it's a lot of great things that are happening that I've been really kind of busy and, and, and focusing my time and energy on. And um, it's really exciting. It's really exciting to, to see all the things that we accomplished. And now you can go back in time and, and, and turn it into a digital uh, asset. And so that's what I'm, I'm doing. And, um, and, I, and I hope everybody like it and just stay tuned. And you can follow me at, uh, I think I'm on Mitch Rock Richmond uh, at Instagram. And uh, you can follow me at planetrock.net and uh, check us out, man. And I, I really appreciate that. All right, you guys, you heard it first. You got to check it out right now. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications button so you never miss an episode of The Basketball Time Machine. All right, see you next time.